Hi everyone, today I'd like to show you my homemade hydrogen generator and compressor unit. I've been working on it for one and a half years now, and I'm finally at a point that I can make large amounts of hydrogen with minimum energy loss. I've started this project to make large hydrogen balloons, such as this uh, World War II style barrage balloon, and to do other experiments. But first let me show you how I started and what I learned along the way. So I started with this jar, in which I placed two stainless steel strips, submerged into a sodium hydroxide solution, and glued a little hose on top for the gases to flow through. So if you then connect 12 volts, and there you go, it produces hydrogen and oxygen. It produces hydrogen at the cathode, which is the negative side, and oxygen at the anode, which is the positive side. And that's enough. So then if we ignite that, it goes off with quite a loud bang. Whew. I did this experiment to see if the standard grade stainless steel is good enough, and it is. So then I made this. This is actually a larger version of the jar generator. It also has an anode and a cathode, but with much larger surface area. It produced much more hydrogen and oxygen than the jar version, so that was good. But it also generated a lot of heat, actually more heat than gas. So when I had it turned on for about an hour, it got so hot that the metal inside expanded and cracked the tank. So that made it very useless. But what I already did with this generator is separating the two gases. I did this by gluing this frame in between the anode and the cathode. To this frame I attached a piece of kitchen towel, which is a kind of synthetic felt. Now the thing is that when this felt is wet, the surface tension in between the fibers prevents the gas to flow through. But because it is wet, it conducts electricity without any measurable resistance. So that way I could separate the hydrogen from the oxygen, and that's how I filled my first little hydrogen balloon. This is my very dodgy transformer, made from two old microwave transformers, from which I removed the secondary coil and replaced it with two parallel electrical wires. They together make 18 windings and produce about 14 volt AC. These diode bridges transform it into DC current and these capacitors make it all nice and flat. I'm planning on transforming it to make it look a little bit better. It has an output voltage of 12 volts and it can handle about 70 amps. So the biggest problem that I had was the heat. And that's because the optimum voltage to split water is around 2 volts. And I'm using 12 volts. If I did use 2 volts it would go very efficient but also very slow. Why it creates more heat when the voltage gets higher is probably because the water has some sort of maximum splitting rate. If you split it faster, the molecules are pulled faster away from each other than they let each other go. It's kind of like with this tape. If you unroll it slowly, it's very quiet, but if you do it fast, it makes a lot of noise. So the noise is lost energy, which is similar to the lost heat. This is just my own hypothesis, so if you have a better or more detailed explanation, please share in the comments below. So after a lot of searching on the web, I found that you can make the hydrogen generator much more efficient by placing neutral plates between the anode and the cathode. Oh, that's a very good pen. So if you have four neutral plates in between, the 12 volts will be split into five sections of 2.4 volts, creating the same amount of gas, but without almost no heat. So this is how my generator is arranged. It's actually two generators side by side. It has one anode in the middle and two cathodes on the outside. And in between there are four neutral plates on either side. So the anode generates oxygen. And the cathode generates hydrogen. So what do the neutral plates generate? Well, this side of the neutral plate is facing to the cathode and therefore becomes an anode and generating oxygen. And this side of the neutral plate is facing to the anode and therefore becomes a cathode and generates hydrogen. And that goes for all the neutral plates. 
So what I then needed to do was put my piece of felt in between each section so the gases could be separated from each other. Okay, I made an exploded view to explain. So we have the cathode, the anode, and um, a piece of felt, which is actually is some sort of membrane. And uh, the hydrogen that's been generated on this side uh, will can only flow through this hole. And the oxygen that's been generated on this side of the membrane can only flow through that hole. And because it's all stacked together, you get one channel with only openings on that side and that side. And that way, uh, through this channel, there will only flow hydrogen, and through this channel, only flow oxygen. And that's the way they are separated. This is just one section. My generator has 10 sections like this. So then I made this. It's called a dry cell. It has 11 plates. I've made the outside transparent so you can see the gas flow through. So this side is actually the hydrogen side and this side is the oxygen side. So you can see there's no gas going through this side. I coated it to make it watertight because the water can leak out through the felt. These containers on top are the reservoirs and the water circulates through the generator pushed up by the rising bubbles. So this side is the hydrogen side and that side is the oxygen side. This generator still also generates a little bit of heat. The temperature will rise about 15 degrees Celsius in 4 hours. So after a while the water will be giving quite an amount of water vapor. And water vapor is of course something we don't need. And because the water is still very alkaline, it ruins the compressor after a while. So to solve that problem, I added this cooling tube, which is just a stainless steel pipe. For the water to flow through, this the return water from the tanks. So from the tank it flows through this hose and the, at the bottom it flows back into the generator. The stainless steel pipe has some PVC tubing around it for the cooling water to flow through. So that way the stainless steel pipe will be cooled and therefore also the water will be cooled. And the water flows in opposite directions so you get optimum temperature difference. I used a stainless steel pipe because almost all affordable metals will dissolve in the sodium hydroxide solution. So that's the generator, now on to the compressor. So this is the compressor unit. The main components are this gas buffering bag made from a beach ball, an old refrigerator compressor, they're free, that's my favorite price, a three-way valve, a couple of relays, two micro switches, one on this side, one on the other side, a pressure switch, a check valve and a pressure relief valve. And of course a tank to store the hydrogen in, for which I use old propane tanks. The buffering bag will be filled with hydrogen by the generator. When it is full, the plate on top of the bag will trigger this micro switch, which in turn powers the compressor relay. The only problem with refrigerator compressors is that they won't start if they have a little bit of pressure on their outlet. So to solve that I added a three-way valve and a timer relay so that it will pump to its own inlet for the first four seconds. After that time, the timer relay switches the three-way valve and it starts to pump the gas into the tank. So that way you don't lose any gas. Normal air compressors sometimes blow off the first bit of air to solve this starting problem. When the buffering bag is pumped empty, this micro switch then turns off the pump. Of course this pressure relief valve is for obvious reasons. I also added this pressure switch all the electricity runs through this switch, so if the desired pressure is reached, in this case 12.5 bar, the generator and pump will be shut down. The generator produces about 70 liters of hydrogen per hour, so this tank will be full in about 8 hours and it will then contain 550 liters of hydrogen, which will cost me around $1.20, so that's 0.2 cents per liter and a lot cheaper than helium. The advantage of using old propane tanks is that you will always have a little bit of smell added to the gas, which is good for safety. Also a very important thing is to never compress hydrogen and oxygen together in the same tank, because that would be extremely dangerous. For safety reasons I regularly check if the membranes are properly working by placing my finger over the outlet of the oxygen tank and if the bubbling stops and also the water level doesn't lower 
then I know that the gases that normally would bubble into this container now seeping through the membrane to the other side and then you would have mixture of oxygen and hydrogen would have the possibility that there would be oxygen in the hydrogen and pumped into the tank which would make it very dangerous but you see it lowers pretty fast so that means the membranes are still intact okay so that's it I think I've rambled on for long enough now Coming up are a lot of hydrogen and oxygen experiments, among other things of course, as well as hydrogen balloon and airship fabrication. So please like, share and subscribe, uh, check me out on Facebook and see you next time.